Alright guys, the uh, Wonder Weasel back here this evening in Townsend, Tennessee. Yes, I know it's dark and I know it's hard to see. But we are outside of the Great Smoky Mountain Heritage Center here in Townsend. We're in an event tonight that we're going to take you through and show you here. Uh, Christmas at the Village at the Great Smoky Mountain Heritage Center. So come along with us for this event guys. I hope you enjoy all right guys we are working our way through the event here tonight at the museum this is actually like i said the uh great smoky mountain uh, heritage center in townsend tennessee and we're just going to bring you through a little bit of it and then take you through the uh Christmas at the village. Guys, this just shows a whole lot of the history and stuff of the area here in town and too at the Heritage Center, the uh, Great Smoky Mountain Heritage Center in town. I just wanted to walk you through the Heritage Center and then also, like I said, we'll go through the Christmas Village. <laughs> Hunting technology from the Indians and the blue gun. Yeah, this little area right here in the museum is actually like what they call a Cherokee roundhouse and such. Guys, what I'm showing you is what the houses the Indians would have used back during the time frame of the area. Sequoia, the originator of the Cherokees, Silvera. Uh, 1770 to 1843. Sequoy was born in Cherokee Town of Tuskegee on the Little Tennessee River. His mother was the daughter of a permanent Cherokee family. Historical records do not identify Sequoia's father. He is actually the one that done the written Cherokee language, guys. All right, guys, the seven clans of the Cherokee. I've showed you a little bit about this at the island of the Holston in Kingsport, Tennessee. Way back. Guys, uh, the seven clans of the Cherokee. You have the Blue Clan, then the Long Hair Clan, the Bird Clan, the Red Paint Clan, the Deer Clan, the Wild Potato Clan, and also the Wolf Clan. Uh, guys, a clan consists of a group of people who claim a common ancestry. Individuals within a clan take care of each other and provide support in times of need. Clan affiliation is inherited through the mother. These carved masks represent the seven Cherokee clans. The number seven has been sacred to the Cherokee since ancient times and all clans are equal guys i'll explain each clan to you now the blue clan historically the blue clan made a medicine of a blue colored plant that healed children also known as the panther wild cat or bear clan which was the oldest clan 
the long-haired clan. This clan wore their hair in uh, elaborate hairstyles. The long-haired clan is considered a very peaceful clan and the peace chief was usually of the long-haired clan. The bird clan members were skilled bird hunters using blowguns and snares. Historically, they were known as messengers. Red paint clan. The red paint clan made red paint for ceremonies. They were the me medicine men and women. The deer clan. This clan was known for its fast runners and deer hunters. They hunted deer for food, yet they respect the animals while they lived among them. Wild potato clan. This clan gathered wild potatoes along streams for food. Also known as the raccoon or bear clan, members of this clan were known to be the keepers of the land. Wolf clan. Wolf Clan was the largest and uh, largest and provided most of the war chiefs. They were the only clan that was allowed to kill a wolf. So guys, that gives you a little history on the seven clans of Cherokee. Uh, they had their music and games. Uh, and games were uh, chunky stickball uh, music were like their wooden leather drums, the flute, uh, uh, shell rattle, uh, just different things, guys. Uh, they also had their medicines, uh, mint, sage, echinacea, uh, hill all. Euro, cherry, uh, catmint, maple, and willow. Uh, Cage Cove and Elkmont, East Tennessee Mountain Culture. Cage Cove, early settlement in Cage Cove. Uh, Cage Cove, East Tennessee Cultural Community, and Cage Cove. Economics, and we'll come through a cabin, a demonstration cabin. Oh, the cast iron cook stove. This is just some of the farming tools that they would have had back in those dime frames. Had like Cage Co. and such. Had Elkmont. Elkmont as a resort community. Uh, logging at Elkmont and in history of Elkmont from trees to tourism. religion in these parts, uh, mountain music of these parts, you got the violin and the mountain dulcimer and the banjo. We are now outside for Christmas at the village here at the Smoky Mountain, Great Smoky Mountain Heritage Center in Townsend, Tennessee. I just brought you through the uh, museum area of the Heritage Center and now like I said we're outside for the Christmas park so we'll enjoy this we got a very nice lit 
walkway. All right, guys, now we are going to Christmas at the village here at the Heritage Center in Townsend, Tennessee. And there's all these cabins out here, guys, that you can go through when you're going through the museum. You do have to pay an admission fee. Guys, you see the lanterns and such in this cabin here. Uh, guys, that's what the lighting was back in the day whenever there was no electricity. So you can kind of tell how dim the lighting was at night. But at least you did have lighting to some degree. And they would have put loads of water mm -hmm. next to the uh, oil lamps to create more light to refract them. All right, guys, we're coming into another cabin here to show you Christmas at the village and everything. In the window, I can barely see you, so there's just lights flickering. <laughs> Guys, this is another cabin here at the Townsend Heritage Center uh, for the Christmas at the Village. Just wanted to show you this one and everything of the way Christmas would have been in this cabin back in the days and around the time frame. All right, guys, we are going to come up on the church here at Christmas at the Village here at the Townsend Heritage Center. Kind of show you what the church would have looked like back in those days during Christmas time and everything. Really, really nice, guys. This is a nice thing that they've done here at the Heritage Center. You can tour these through the day in warm weather. They don't have them decorated for Christmas, but you can tour all this then, like I said, for a small fee at the Heritage Center. Or you can do it during the day anytime when they're open. Guys, they've even got the barn decorated here in this area for uh, all this stuff. Like I said, there's cabins, a uh, church or two, uh, barns, hog pens, all kinds of things. Huh? Smokehouses. Uh, smokehouses and such, guys. It's kind of like a little, like, old school back in the time frame of uh, the barns and the homes, the cabins, churches and things to just kind of show you what it looked like. And they've got it all decorated up for Christmas. Definitely come and check it out when you come to the Heritage Center, guys. It is worth your time. We still got more out there here to go. So we will continue on and show you everything. All right, guys, we're gonna come into here. Uh, this is the print shop, uh, Maryville Times 
uh, the Daily Times of Maribel. Got the printing presses. If you've ever watched the Waltons, you've seen John Boy's printing press in the shed beside their house that he had. Well, these are just similar to it. All right, guys, we're going to go on through. All right, guys. Yeah, hey, like I said, I kind of quoted the Waltons there a minute ago with the uh, printing press, John Boy Walton. Guys, beside the print shop is a sawmill. John Boy's daddy and papa were sawmillers on the Waltons and such. This is a sawmill here in Townsend. It's a pretty good size operation, guys. Guys, they've got one of the uh, logging camp set-off houses here also as well at the Heritage Center, uh, at the Great Smoky Mountain Heritage Center here in Townsend. They used to set these off the rail cars up in the mountains whenever they did the uh, logging camps and such for the workers to stay in. Uh, they had a... Uh, hole in the top of the ceiling that they dropped the cable through where they just drop down pick them up and set them over off the tracks this is a 14 by 10 building keep in mind that's the size of my outbuilding that we keep our lawnmower and such in i didn't realize it was big enough to turn into a miniature house set off house according to a former resident of a set off house the houses were set so close to the railroad tracks that her family's daily routine was interrupted when the train carrying logs passed by. Fearing an accident from the logs rolling off the train, the family would run from their home into the yard away from the tracks only after the train safely passed would they return inside so guys this is pretty neat and guys now we are at the village blacksmith shop love the carriages I'm going to assume that this, some of this stuff was steam operated by the way it looks. I mean, it kind of looks like it has to be. Yeah, yep, yeah, Baxter steam engine 1868, and that is it right there, guys. All right, guys, we're going to go on through. That's the blacksmith shop here at the Heritage Center in Townsend. All right, guys, like I told you, her the Heritage Center in Townsend, Tennessee, the Christmas in the village is what I just took you through. I think there might be just a little bit more. I'm not 100% positive. We're going to continue on through a transportation gallery. Oh, this is definitely different. You have a horse here that's got its Christmas decor on and the sled behind it with the Christmas tree and groceries. It's so wild. 
Got a big old cannon here. Uh, you've got a Bel Air over here. A 50, 1953 Chevy. Oh my goodness sakes, it's even got the window sticker in it. Um, guys, the price of this car in total in that time frame, which is a, it's a, it's a 53 Chevrolet. Uh, let's see. $2,075 for that car. Wow. That would be amazing if you could buy vehicles for that price nowadays. And you got your horse and buggy. I like that buggy. Big old buggy, dude. Uh, you got an old sleigh right here that you can put behind a horse. A one horse open sleigh. Another buggy here that goes behind a horse. Oh, that one's a six seater. At least four anyway, probably six. Uh, wheelchairs from those errors back in the day. An old 14, 1914 Ford Model T wagon truck another buggy mountain buggy or mountain wagon oh you also got another snow sled right here as well that's kind of cool Um, you've also got a freight wagon that would be pulled by a horse. Uh, a U.S. mail wagon would be pulled by a horse. And a dump wagon that would be pulled by a horse. And also a rail car. A uh, railroad for the railroad. And an old scale. Play scales. All right, guys, this is going to conclude our venture through here at the Smoky Mountain Heritage Center. Here is the, they got an amphitheater out back. They do shows here a lot of times. Uh, guys, I wanted to bring you through all this, show you the museum, and also show you the Smoky, or the Christmas at the Village here at the Heritage Center in Townsend, Tennessee. It goes through the 1st of January, guys. This kicked off uh, right here at Thanksgiving and goes through after the first of the year. Really recommend checking them out. Definitely come and check them out, guys. Uh, guys, if you like this vlog, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so so far. Uh, ring those notification bells. Keep your notifications rolling. Uh, so, guys, when you have videos come out, you'll be able to get the notifications of it when new ones arrive. Uh, if you're new here, we do upload Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 8 a.m. They go live uh, three videos a week. So, guys, as I keep saying, we'll keep shooting. Y'all keep watching them. And this is the Wonder Weasel signing off from the Great Smoky Mountains Heritage Center in Townsend, Tennessee, and Christmas at the Village. Mm -hmm.